be there. That's the only thing I can explain to you. Uh, so uh, what is your next project you have coming up now that Kwanzaa is over? Uh, well, um, in addition, and one of the things that makes, a, makes us a collective is that within the group we do different things. So several of us are members of the National Association of Black Storytellers, okay. the Rio Circle of Merlin. And this coming Thursday, we will be at the BMA performing there. Oh, okay. So that, yeah, I did see that. And yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, my significant other said that we were going. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, because he, he found it, and I, I didn't, I wasn't yeah, aware because he had been advertised. Um, so, excellent with that. And I understand you all have another project coming. Well, we do have a project coming up at Friends School, um, which Deborah's children attend uh, Friends School in Baltimore, and we will be doing something with their middle school, and that comes at the latter part of January. And hopefully the following month, in February, we'll probably be doing some things um, during uh, Black History Month. In fact, we just got a call today that the Mass Transit Administration has invited our drivers to participate in with their Black History Program. I have you shared that with the collective. Uh, so no, no, I have Because there's just so many things that are coming at us in, in, in different areas because we do so many things professionally. Um, for example, I'm a counselor at Baltimore City Community College. We have professors who also work with us, um, one with Baltimore City Community College and Coppin State University, as well as Morgan State University. We also have um, a psychologist on staff. We also have nurses who are there as well, and we have a director of a family support um, center out in Cherry Hill, and Deborah, who is an accountant. I mean, we just have a wide vast of professions within our collective, but more than just that, you know, we really embrace and um, encourage our children to be as active as possible because we believe truly that it takes a whole village to raise a child. Exactly. And more than that, it keeps a whole village to keep a parent sane. And we do keep each other sane. <laughs> so, but we enjoy our children and we enjoy each other's children because her children are my children, my children are her children. And you know, the list goes on and on because we do need to embrace our children to let them know that there's a whole lot of venues that they can participate in, not just with their skills and abilities, their natural skills and abilities, but just with their their um, academics as well. Mm -hmm. So our children have had the opportunity to really travel, I would say, throughout the United States and beyond. Excellent. You know, so it's been a wonderful experience just being with them. We're just going along for the time. Okay, I know that's right. right. And, 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 and they're, they're the drivers. Because my children, um, to, to make a point, my children um, were members of the Grio Circle before I was. And I started going to the meeting just to understand what it was that they were doing because at that time they were on the radio with Mama Mary Carter Smith right. and doing things like that. So I started going to the um, meeting and I became a real after my children, you know. So parents ought to be involved in what their children are doing, you know, first of all to see what it is. And mm -hmm. I say, well, I keep going to the meeting, I might go enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I became real. So they always tell me, I've been in real love with <laughs> okay. But, but you know, I like the concept of my child is yours and your child. That's right. Back when I was young, and I'm sure when we were younger, that that the community was our yeah, village. Yes, that's if you right. did something, oh, that's Miss, right. Miss B down oh, the street would take right. care of that and then tell Mama. And you didn't want to you tell know, because she'd take care right. of it. Right. And she would beat you, then Mama would beat you. And um and uh, folks, again, we're gonna we're gonna cut to it in a moment, but I want you to see how disciplined these young people are, not just the discipline and the dance, but the social skills that they uh, possess and, and the sharing and, uh, uh, you know, uh, camaraderie uh, that they possess uh, as a group, as a collective. I mean, they were really in an ensemble and those older ones, you know, kind of mentor the younger ones and it was just a beautiful experience. So let's take a look at the, uh, another part of the uh, Ponzi event. But the first piece that you'll see is a piece which comes from Guinea, West Africa, but it's danced in, in Mali, and it's danced in Senegal, and it's danced in Gambia as well. It's a very popular piece. The second part, Domba, the big dance, is a celebration dance.
tell you. I mean, folks, next year, make it your business to attend a Kwanzaa celebration and because they will they explain everything to you and, and how it happens. Um, I understand you guys are thinking in terms of going on the airways with your uh, collective. Yes. So we're so excited. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> well, tell the audience a little bit about it so we can look forward to what, what you propose to bring. Well, what we intend to do is highlight um, some of the African American cultural cultural persons, groups, and things mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Yes. In Baltimore yes. Because Baltimore is, is rich with um, culture, and a lot of people just don't know, mm -hmm. and they don't know where to go to do. People say all the time, do you have a dance class? Do you have a dance class? But there are many dance classes that people just don't know about and don't go to. So we intend to show them. And okay. inform them as to and where inform, they That's right. And, and introduce them to things that they may not know and or let them see things that they've seen before and just didn't know how to connect with them. Because it's, it's just a wide variety of talent. And introduce them to things that they should know. They, they should, should know where everybody is. Yeah. Yeah. And we should know why everything is happening and when it's happening. Um, we've started uh, years ago, in fact, my son's musical career, I would say, started at Sankofa Dance Theater, Sankofa oh, okay. Center for Culture Enrichment. And again, as Deborah spoke earlier, you know, she followed her children. And I followed my children there, my son and, and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And as a direct result of their um, involvement with Sankofa Dance Theater and with dancing and drumming, more than that, which was so beautiful about that experience, is that they developed it, developed friendships and relationships with people who have now spanned over their entire lifetime. I mean, these are the epitome of what friendship should really be all about. And so we followed them through through that experience, and now moving on and upward into to, to different venues as well. So we've always wanted to share that information with the community at large and to let them know that it's open for everyone. And, and for example, um, there's one company called Return to Go Ray where they truly believe that everyone can dance. And so we want everybody to be able to, to experience this along with where those other groups have, and people have spiraled into other experiences. What I, what, I, uh, what I thoroughly enjoyed was the fact that they were so disciplined and so in order, I mean, it was, it was really tight, you know what I mean? And those guys, the drummers, especially the little one, it was like, it was like he was born with that drum in his hand, and you know what I'm saying? His mother was an, is currently um, an African dancer in um, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, with a group called G.Y. and Mata. But she lived here for many years, especially when, when he was first born. And she danced while carrying him. So yeah, he was he born with the spirit Exactly, exactly. Of it. And most of them had. I mean, because that's what we do. That's that's what we love to do. Wonderful. Well, I want you to, folks to share with us. We have a clip of uh, our young man playing drums. Let's take a look at this.
money about? What, 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 what does that mean? Well, in the African tradition and in any, in, in our African American tradition, if there's something that you really like, you'll put your money where your mouth is. And so that's what people were showing them, is that they really enjoyed what they saw, and so they gave them money. So the to people, encourage them to do more. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm saying, do I mean, do you tell people this in advance, or is it just a, a feeling that they have that they should, should do this? How do they know that to, to do that? Um, um, they know it basically from past experiences. We certainly don't announce that anybody gives any money, but what happens is when somebody starts it off, people tend to follow. And it's probably been helpful to promote you, you know, because you, you guys are world travelers, from what I understand. <laughs> So I guess it would be good to, and helpful to um, find some of these uh, trips that you all take. Yeah, mostly um, when they when they um, put the money down for the drummers, we distribute it to the drummers. Oh, because they are the ones who work for it. Oh, it's it's them that they are showing their appreciation for. Oh. So that money goes to them. Oh, excellent. So yeah. they just take it and, and divide it up. So uh, that's not just for the, the males, though. I mean, it's for if it's if the money comes just to the male. Every drummer over there got a part of, of what was put down for the drummers. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, got a yes. part of what was put down. Yes. So right. so for example, now we're gonna get away from the kids for a second, and we're gonna talk about this uh, money thing. Um, if you were performing, for example, and you had like a little basket or something, I mean, well, I probably would have a little basket. What I'm saying. <laughs> they could do that. <laughs> So even if it's a, it's a singer, it's a, if it's a dancer, it's a musician, if you like what you see and you want to encourage them to go further in their musical experience, then why not? You know, why and, not? I, and I've noticed it um, on, on television with some of the ministers when they yes. are preaching. They are laying money down at all oh. and stuff like that. So it's the kind of same theory. I, I, right. I assume yeah, yeah, you That's right. They run up there and put it right there. But ministers expect that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll get it one way or the other, but <laughs> most about, time they will laugh at church. Exactly. We're talking about support, and this is just support. A lot of times what that money is usually used for is repair their instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the African drum that they play this jimbe and this doom doom are very expensive drums. You know, to some it may not look expensive, but they're very, very expensive and very, very spiritual drums. So there's a lot of work that goes into keeping them mm -hmm. in good repair, but there's also a lot of work that goes into those boys and young ladies being prepared to drum mm -hmm. because it's a lot of physical um, exertion as well as spiritual oh. exertion. Because as my son has told me on many occasions is that he just goes into a zone. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just relax and just let God do his work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, if God did his work that night, I have to tell you. He was definitely in the world. He was. He was. He was. Yeah, right. yeah, definitely. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me today and also my beautiful sisters here. I have Cheryl Hinton and Deborah Pierce, and they're with, uh, we want to say that name for me. Masude. <laughs> and folks, you've got to be, come and see him and be a part of this. And also, um, if you're in the neighborhood, or if not, come on down to the Great Blacks and Wax Museum, visit our gift shop. And if you'd like to be a participate in our audience, you're more than welcome. We shoot the first Monday of every month. And we also encourage you to come and visit our museum because, like I said, once you've been here, you'll never forget it. You'll always remember the black experience. And I want to thank you again for joining